This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. A juvenile Murray eel at a dive site of the Lakshadweep Islands. And the message here seems clear. This is my turf. Stay away. And perhaps we should because this coral reef is a fragile treasure. Home not just to this eel, but to thousands of other species who depend on it for their very survival. Ever seen the animated film Finding Nemo? Well, in our waters in the Lakshadweep and Andaman Islands, there is no dearth of fish like Nemo. They're actually called clownfish, and they thrive on the wavy, soft coral. It's a relationship of mutual dependence. One cannot do without the other. It all looks really stunning, doesn't it? But here's a fact. What you see here could be killed off in just a few decades. And it's not the same as losing a giant aquarium which just happens to be underwater. If our coral reefs die, we all suffer. And here's why. Coral reefs are some of the largest and most complex ecosystems on Earth. They are home to 4,000 species of fish, 700 species of corals, and thousands of forms of plant and animal life. Scientists estimate that there are more than one million species of plants and animals associated with the coral reef ecosystem. But these are just numbers, right? the type that international scientists keep throwing at us? Well, yes. So you ask, tell us about India. Just how bad is it in our own country? And the answer to that, we don't really know. Sure, we have some clues and indicators, but we are far, far away from getting a complete picture. And this is the reason. In a country as large as ours, with a coastline of 7,500 kilometers, there are no more than 10 or 11 marine biologists who actually happen to dive the seas. Despite a coastline as long as ours, it's often said that we really don't have a culture of the seas or of our oceans. When we speak about conservation, everybody speaks about the tiger and that's critical. But just what's happening with our precious marine ecosystems? And the answer is precious little. There are just a handful of marine biologists in our country who actually dive the ocean. Take, for instance, this fact. There are hundreds and hundreds of islands in the Andaman and Nicobar Island chain. And as we shoot this documentary, there are only two young researchers, both PhD students, marine biologists, who are actually diving to see what's happening under the waters. So we'll go down the line. We put an we don't have a mooring line there because we don't want the fishermen know the site. So that place we keep it a secret. So we don't put a mooring line there. So we have to throw the anchor down there. Vardhan Patankar and Elvika D'Souza, in that sense, are part of that very select group. A couple of youngsters who've chosen to dive the seas around remote islands in the Andaman and Nicobar chain. 
Vardhan is one of the few marine biologists in India who actually knows how to measure the density of coral habitat in a particular area and has the equipment and the skills to document their health. For Vardhan, it's all one huge adventure. India has huge coastline and there's a lot of potential for research. And I think more and more people should get into this field because there is so many chances that we can find something new underwater. And whatever we do is pioneering because there is no baseline information in, in India. Elrica D'Souza spends her time searching for the highly endangered dugong, a type of sea cow, found in small numbers in Indian waters. The dugongs have been hunted traditionally by the, by the, by the tribals of the island, but over the years the population has, has declined. And the dugong being a marine mammal, it reproduces once in five to seven years, and the, uh, the, uh, the reproduction rate is also... Uh, uh, the young one uh, lives with the mother for almost one and a half year. And because of this low rate of reproduction and the high rate at which it is being hunted, and also the, the boat trafficking in the, dugong in the dugong feeding sites, in their resting sites, and also due to uh, uh, entangle, uh, getting entangled in fishing nets, these are all the threats to the dugongs in these islands. Dr. Rohan Arthur is one of India's most experienced marine biologists, someone who dives the oceans to collect first-hand information. Sometimes it's pretty frustrating work. The seas have a strange way of carrying away expensive equipment like temperature and current data monitors. But the gains of doing first-hand research cannot be underestimated. This dive site of Karmath Island in the Lakshadweep chain is called the Big Potato Patch. Mitali Kakkar, perhaps the most experienced scuba diver in these waters, discovered the site way back in 1991. With terrain which looks like it was once a part of the moon, the patch is a treasure of Poretus Rus and Pavona coral. Dr. Arthur discovered a similar site nearby, a treasure trove of research material. We are about you know, two decades behind uh, the rest of the world when it comes to, to marine research, and that's largely because um, in-water studies uh, are sorely lacking. I mean, we don't really have the kind of information that we require to, to make even the most even, you know, the, uh, even the best informed judgments about what, how, the predictions about what, where the reef is going. Um, in 1998, when I came here, um, virtually nobody had actually looked at these reefs underwater as through a, through uh, a marine biologist's eye. And so, in trying to figure out what kind of, you know, the effect of the bleaching itself, I had no baselines to go on. Uh, and this is the case for pretty much everywhere in, in the country. Even today, we do not have uh, adequate baselines for any part of the country, just in terms of the to total number of species of coral that we have, in terms of what are the processes that are affecting these reefs, um, and what are the factors that will that are, are resulting in, in the reefs re in, in whether these reefs recover or not from catastrophic events. So, given the fact that our information on corals is essentially limited because of a lack of trained scientists, what is it that we do know about the threat? that our coral treasures face in our waters. Throughout this series, Siddharth Pandey and I have filmed more than a dozen dive sites of the Lakshadweep and Andaman and Nicobar Islands, along with some of the finest scuba divers and marine biologists in the country. The footage that you see here indicates a mixed picture. There has been a clear impact of a rise in seawater temperatures on corals in the Lakshadweep chain. This has been attributed to an El Niño phenomena which resulted in a sharp increase in ocean water temperatures resulting in mass mortality of some of the coral reefs here. 
but in other areas, there are signs of remarkable coral recovery. Young coral, evidently with the ability to adjust to the new climatic changes provoked by global warming. Well, in 1998, um, during the last bleaching event, uh, Jack Point was one of the places that was worst affected. Uh, it's one of the sites on the east and it was really badly affected. Before the 1998 bleaching, this was quite a different site. Um, there has been significant recovery at this site, uh, but I haven't seen it in several years now, so I'm actually quite interested to go down and, and uh, see exactly what kind of recovery has, has been taking place.